Hi there and welcome to this next lesson. Here we're going to be working on a kind of random format. Uh, the one I care about is the one I'm going to open in Illustrator to work on a series of compositions we can make before we make our final infographic. Well, as you can see, apart from an Illustrator in Photoshop, we also have a lot of formats. I'm going to choose one so that we don't overload this too much, and I'm going to put it uh, in horizontal. As I know, I want my infograph to be in horizontal. Okay, from here, I'm going to grab any brush, as what I want to do is make a quick sketch of what I want in my design. So, as I want something quick and concise, I don't want to go into details, um, what I'm going to do is establish a series of squares and in them what I'll do is put in the things that I want to appear in my infographic. As I said before, the heading, subheading, the places where I want the information to appear, where I want there maybe to be an illustration, like what I just did. But I'm going to try and do it a little bit better. You don't have to force yourself to do the squares. You can just do it straight on the paper or in layers. But what happens is then in smaller formats, you're forced to summarize and synthesize. So I want to try and make something that's more concentrated and, you know, not have to think too much about this. I'm going to duplicate this. Well, I'm going to make more squares because I don't want to close myself to other options. And I want to expand a little to see the series of ideas I can get, um, you know, that my head can get to on how I want to establish and structure all the information I want to put in. Okay, uh, I've made the squares. Keeping in mind that I wanted to, them to be wider, then they are taller. And from here, what I want to do is put in the, the definitely the earth into this concept. So I'm going to start making the circle inside so that I can represent the planet. And then I want to see if focusing the information around it, we end up with a result that we like. We could put the title to the left margin, well, because if we put everything in the center, it would just be overwhelming visually with too many images. We're going to suppose then it's a paper. And we can see that these circles represent the heads that I want to make of our characters, the rectangles and the information that I want to put in. In your case, I don't know what you want to do, but I recommend that you get some concrete information. So like establish three characters as, an, as a minimum, and then in your project, place a main object and try to place everything around it, all the rest of the information around that to see just how you're going to propose all these information, all these things. What I'm going to do now is very recommendable. You can do it on a draft paper even, on actual paper, but I'm trying to digitalize everything so that you can see the process of what I'm doing. In this second image, what I'm going to do now is put the heading in the center, the subheading, and this time on the left, I've placed the planet. In this way, we're spreading everything out a little bit more. Now we just have to establish the moon. Now I would have to place the rest of the information that I put in before in the rectangles, the three circles represent the heads. I would have to see how I would divide it all so it looks all balanced. I could put in another character even, but that just seems just a bit too much. 
you know? Because I have my three heads, and putting in another external one well, that would have, like, a body, I'm going to focus more on the Earth and the Moon, and that way we can play a little bit more with that. In this case, in this third box right here, what I'm going to do is the opposite. I'm going to try and put the heading somewhere else and place the earth and the moon. Well, I'm going to play with that a little. Maybe here I could do some kind of expansion or include, as we're talking about the environment, some flora somewhere. But I think the space topic is going to be a little bit better, so I wouldn't know how to include it. The heading in this place is down, but I don't really like it, because normally the heading is there to catch your attention. If you put it below, our reading goes from left to right, and starts from the top left corner. So it wouldn't be very smart to put our title on the bottom. Okay, in the last square, I'm going to try and change the position of the Earth and the Moon. This time I'm going to, to establish a more central image like I did in the beginning. But I'm going to take away a little bit of importance to the Earth. I'm going to leave it big, but I'm going to split it halfway so the rest of the information can fit in. I like that the heading fits in the middle because it stands out quite a lot. And, well, the rest of the information could be spread around the margins in a little more of an extensive way. And maybe in the center I could add in some more things. I don't really know where to put the moon, so that it doesn't clash with the information. Hmm, I'll have to work on that. And, well, here I'm going to place the characters as I can see that they fit. And, as I said... Well, in the center, I could put in maybe some facts or maybe the information on the characters as well. As they're, th they're so close, it doesn't really fit very well. I don't know. You can see how you distribute it. It depends on the space you have. To me personally, of the four I've done, the last one is probably the best, both for how well distributed everything is and for how much coherence it has, because the text fit well, the image does too, and I can see that the image in general has space to breathe and it's not super saturated. So I think I'm gonna stick with this last one. And well, the next step is to go on to vectorize our final idea. I'm going to sketch it as well, and we wouldn't have that much left to do. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson, where we'll open up Illustrator. Bye, guys.